Yeah, that is Big Rob, and uh, Big Rob, one of the funkiest brothers today, and he has a, a new CD out called Grown Folks Music on the Over 25 Sound Independent Label, and we've just been digging the music from Big Rob, who is also an integral part of the band Zap out of Dayton, Ohio, but he is also a producer, singer, songwriter, and uh, musicologist. We'll find out all about that. And without further delay, I welcome to the Upper Room with Joe Kelly, Big Rob. How you doing, Rob? Joe, what's happening, Big Baby? Yeah, great great to have you on air. And, uh, you know, i got to thank you for giving me all that great music to, to bring down in the studio and get funky with. Hey, man, well, I want to thank you for uh, the opportunity, you know, to uh, to be heard by masses. And, you know, just, just want to say, first of all, uh, all the glory goes to God and, you know, uh, if anybody's out there listening, not if anybody's out there listening, but shall we say, as everybody's out there listening right, in cyberspace right. and, you know, in the mess hall, in the bathrooms, all around Connecticut <laughs> and all around the world, that if you woke up this morning, then that's a wonderful thing because there's some people who went to sleep last night who uh, didn't wake up. So, you know, first of all, we give all the glory to God. And, you know, just thank you, man, for providing an opportunity for artists such as myself to have a place to uh, have their music heard. And I, I got to commend you on it because, I mean, you're a positive brother and, and also talking about uh, God and leaving the cussing to the side for the other folks. Um, how, how tough of a decision is that to uh, to check that at the door? When you uh, not at all. Not at all. You know, I mean, not, not a hard decision. I mean, you know, some people, uh, I mean, you know, why for me, the vulgarity and the profanity uh, has just never really been a part of anything that I've done. So, you know, I mean, what's the, what's the purpose of trying to bring it in there and introduce it? Because, you know, I go back to the old school when it wasn't a part of uh, making good music and it didn't have anything to do with selling the record. So, you know, I'm just kind of following uh, my ancestors, my funky ancestors and my funky heroes. I never heard Bootsy cuss on the record. I never heard Roger cuss on the record. You know, I mean, of course, there's some Funkadelic records, which are a bit questionable, but those guys, George's a little bit more on edge, but... Even for the most part, even those guys, you know what I mean, they kept it uh, positive, they kept it fun, they kept it upbeat. And uh, I never heard the Jackson 5 cuss on the record, Hodes Redd and James Brown, uh, the Motown sound. So, you know, I don't know why I would do it either. And uh, our listeners, we should let them know right now to go to a great website. Uh, I'll give you the spelling because uh, that's important as well. Hey, Big Rob, H E Y B I G G R O B B dot com, and uh, you can pick up grown folks' music from Big yeah. Rob. And how, how was the uh, decision to go the independent route? Um, and and what's been working, and what what's still a, some mountains you got to climb? Well, you know, uh, it's it's a lot of mountains that you have to climb being an independent, because basically I'm doing it just like uh, Barry Gordy did it in the summer of 1960. You know, what I mean, we 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 are uh, recording in one room, and then the room next to that, we're pressing them up, and the room next to that, we're packaging in the next room. You know, we, we're just trying to do it all uh, ourselves. So, you know, uh, if someone would come along, I guess a big major would come along and pick up the Grown Folks Music Project, and I do welcome that. Um, you know, it would be a lot easier, but then at the same time, you know, I don't know if the music would get to the people, so it, it would take a specific, you know, type of label to uh, really you know, get Big Rob out there. So, I mean, it, it's all good. I mean, work, you know, I mean, if you don't work, you don't eat. And so it's a lot of work. It's a, it's definitely a uphill battle. I mean, you know, you got to keep running back to FedEx and the post office and, yeah. you Hold know, the, calling PDs and MDs and everybody, but it's all good. And I, I think the music stands on itself. I mean, you you got people's heads bobbing and, and just uh, really nice production work. How how about the recording um how how'd you go about, for instance, the Big Rob show, uh, recording such as that? How how do you record? Uh, well, I record uh, in numerous ways. Actually, the Big Rob show uh, is a combination of a couple of ideas I had. I also have a song out called Big Rob's House Party, Part One and Part Three, which actually uh, is being released by a label here in the United States, Malico Waldoxy. I found out just came out uh, the other day and. Uh, and so the Big Rob show was kind of like a part two to that. And a friend of mine, Gary, uh, Mixmaster Mitch out of Atlanta, Georgia, and Sideman Baby, uh, some pretty notable DJs down in Atlanta, uh, suggested I would I should go in and 
you know, fooled around with the concept of, uh, you know, taking some old school party chants and some old school party songs and putting it over a funky beat. And uh, so they really encouraged me to do it, and, and that's what you hear when you hit a Big Rob show. So uh, recording, you know, I mean, I can record uh, anywhere from a four-track and a micro cassette to Pro Tools to, you know, two-inch completely analog. It, it, You know, it just doesn't matter whatever it takes to get it down. Uh, Roger, who's a major influence, uh, you know, my teacher, my mentor, my friend, big brother, everything, you know what I mean? That cat was my universe in lots of ways as far as musical teachings. Uh, you know, he told me a long time ago, even when I was a kid, he said there's no right and wrong way to make a hit record. So, you know, I encourage anybody out there, I mean, you know, as guys who might be in the dorm with a four-track or a little digital multi-track or, you know, whatever it takes to get the idea down. You know, because, I mean, you know, you got records like Bruce Springs, Nebraska, which are classics, and he recorded that on four-track. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I mean, you know, and then you got Michael Jackson, they say he spent $21 million or something to make a record out. I wouldn't spend that much to make a record. <laughs> so, so, so you spoke on uh, your mentor, Roger Trotten, of course, who, of course, who passed away yeah. a few years ago, uh, very untimely and sadly. But uh, how did you first, uh, I mean, you growing up in Cincinnati, Ohio, and, and Dayton area, how, how did you come in contact with, with some of uh, my heroes and your heroes? Well, actually, Joe, I uh, started out, you know, fooling around with uh, my cousins, uh, uh, one of my older cousins, when I was a little kid, gave me a cassette player for Christmas, a cassette recorder. You know, one of those little Radio Shack deals that had a microphone on it. And, uh, you know, I was fascinated with the fact of being able to talk into this thing and go around and interview people. So I became a little, you know, a little, uh, you know, walking and talking Max Robinson. I don't know if anybody remembers Max Robinson, but he was a, you know, a black guy who used to be on ABC News. Right, right. So I, you know, so I was walking around trying to be a little Max Robinson, interviewing everybody, and then that led into, you know, actually finding the community radio station, uh, kind of like the situation that you're in, where I could program my own music and learning. And once I did that, I got kind of bored with just programming music, and so I wanted to spice up my show. And uh, I found out I had the right to ask entertainers if I could interview them. So... You know, and once I went on that quest, and, you know, of course, they're, you know, entertainers love to talk like I'm talking. So that's how I first met Roger. You know what I mean? That, that's exactly how I first met him. And uh, Midnight Star, who's from my hometown, Cincinnati, Ohio, Bootsy Collins, all those guys. And I always uh, think back to those times because that was the early 80s, and I was a young kid, like 12 or 13 years old. And, um, you know, it was really, Cincinnati was, oh, man. Just, you know, that little Ohio Valley is just the epicenter of funk and R&B music at the time. You know, I mean, you know, because like I said, you got groups like Midnight Star, which, you know, blossomed into the Callaways and right. The Deal, which is where L.A. and Babyface uh, came from. And, and, and Slave. Yeah. Slave, which is from Dayton. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I mean, all these groups are around 50-mile radius, uh, you know, are from these areas. I mean, you know, Slave, Heat Wave, Sun. Dayton, Platypus, New Horizons, Zap, Roger, Bootsy, uh, Midnight Star, uh, Wilbert Longmire, Penny Ford. I mean, you know, it's just, oh, man, I can just go on and on and on. See, see, you're making me jealous. Every name you list and then the life you led so far. That's, hey, that's well, you know, cool. it, yeah. it's ironic. I mean, because even if y'all think about somebody like I mentioned Penny Ford, and people right. say, well, say, well, who's Penny Ford? She sing with Shaka Khan now, right? Well, she sings with Shaq Khan, and and she also, uh, her most famous, most notable thing to the tune of about 10 or 15 million records was she is a lady who sang I Got the Power with Snap, you know. Right, right. And, I mean, you know, that that was a big, massive hit record. You know, and she's somebody who, you know, I used to go to the skating rink and hang out with as a kid, and, you know, I watched her go from having her dream into, you know, it becoming a reality. And just seeing so many people, you know, I mean, it's a group out of a, Cincinnati, uh, I don't know if they're still together, they're called the Blessed Union of Souls. And the guy who led that group, his name is uh, Elliot Sloan. And Elliot used to be in a local band uh, called The Movies when I was coming up. And him and another guy in his group called Eddie Hedges. And, you know, I mean, so just coming, I mean, Cincinnati, and then, you know, it's nothing to walk down the street and see Phelps, Catfish, Collins, or Razor Sharp from Bootsy's Rubber Band, or Frankie Cash, Waddy, or Mudbone. Uh, Cooper, who went on to form Sly Fox, or so you know, I mean, just just growing up in that whole musical environment, man. 
you know, and of course the music. I believe that the the Cincinnati music thing most definitely was sparked and encouraged by the fact that James Brown recorded, you know, for at least a decade there in Cincinnati, and made you know, I mean, all kind of massive hit records, probably from, you know, I got you, I feel good, all the way up into Sex Machine or something. So all those songs, Lick and Stick, uh, you know, Papa uh, don't take, not Papa don't take no mess. Papa's got a brand new bag. All those songs were either recorded in and around Cincinnati or they were funneled through because King Records that James Brown was on at the time was right there in my neighborhood. So, you know what I mean? So it's the music heritage just goes really, really deep. And uh, Big Rob is continuing that with uh, fresh new record, Grown Folks Music. And it's Please buy one. Please buy one. Yeah, please buy one. And if, you, if you're in the big business and you want to talk business with Big Rob, you can go to his website, heybigrob.com, H-E-Y-B-I-G-G-R-O-B-B.com. It's a real nice, nicely put together site. I got to commend you on that. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah. The young man who did it for me, Megabyte, who is open for business. Uh, anybody needs a website made, uh, you can come to my site and contact him. He's, uh, he's phenomenal at it. And, uh, you know, I mean, God is just blessing me, man. I mean, I've just, just been blessed to meet a lot of positive people who want to join the bandwagon and, you know, I'm trying to bring that over 25 sound back because with all the vulgarity and all the negativity specifically geared towards women and towards sexual connotations, uh, you know, I mean, I just don't believe that we need all that to get our party on. Right. You know, I mean, I'm not I'm not hating on the people who do that. That's their bag. It's not mine. And so if they can, you know, I had to ask myself some time ago, if guys can get on the microphone and, you know, be explicit, with a whole lot of tenacity, then I need to take the same tenacity and equal out the situation a little bit and come with something positive. So I'm just trying to make music that makes people dance and use all the tricks and trade that uh, I've learned from hanging out with Roger and Bootsy and, you know, all the many funky folks that I've met and seen throughout the year. And one of the songs which uh, you definitely give a lot of love to is uh, something we're going to get into right now. It's uh, Southern Ladies, the Over 25 Mix featuring... Uncle, Uncle Love. Love. That's Uncle right. Love. That's my yeah. man. So uh, Southern, Southern ladies, huh? Fondness for your heart, right? Oh, please believe me. Well, <laughs> I, I, like, I like all ladies. I mean, right, I'm, right. I'm strictly heterosexual. Right. Uh, uh, boy loves girl, and uh, I'm with it. <laughs> <laughs> I love all the ladies, and all the ladies out there listening, come on over to HeyBigRob.com and uh, show me some love. and Because uh, I think all ladies, not just Southern ladies. Because, you know, Joe, when I talk about Southern ladies, it doesn't mean a lady has to be down in the southern region of the country. Sure, sure. She might be right there next to you, but, you know, she might know how to make a little cornbread. Or... You ever had cornbread, Joe? Yeah, I, I did. I did. I ever had collard greens? Collard greens, no. Oh, Joe, <laughs> come on, man. I, I could put that on my shopping list. Oh, Joe, we're going to have to bring you over, man, fix you up with some collard greens and some <laughs> candy yams and some macaroni and cheese, man. Uh, I'm and, down for that. You know, not not that, not the Stouffer's kind, man, but, right, you know. Right. The kind that's got big blocks of cheese and cheddar cheese. and Oh, man, I'm making somebody hungry. I think you better play the song, Joe. <laughs> so Big Rob's my special guest. This is from Grown Folks Music. It is called Southern Lager and Uncle Love. And that's from Grown Folks Music. And it's a really, really diverse CD. You know, we mentioned the funkiness and, and the great R&B stylings of Big Rob. But he's uh, VOF.org. Yeah. We're on there, Rob. Hey, what's up, hey, man? I'm trying, I'm trying to drum us up some business Yeah, I know. You, you got Hold on, let me make this announcement. Okay. Go to WVOF.org if you're not already there, because we're live on the radio. And uh, tune in. Check us out. WVOF.org. I like, I like the way that sounds. <laughs> so you got to thank, thanks for drumming up uh, the interest out there. Oh, my goodness, yeah. man. I mean, you're doing something wonderful. Everybody needs to know about it. I mean, you know, so much negativity in the world. You know what I mean? That if somebody runs a car into a telephone pole, it falls and knocks over two more cars. You know what I mean? That's on the front of the news. But if, you know, you're giving the artist the opportunity to have their new recordings played and, you know, people are discovering new music and getting good vibes off of it, whether they're in the bookstore, drinking a, a tall uh, Cafe Grande or wherever that. <laughs> Wherever they at, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, that's never on the 6 o'clock news. No, nah, no, nah, they don't want to hear about that, right? You know what I mean? But we want to hear about it. That's yeah. the biggest misconception. We yeah. want to hear about the good right. stuff. You know what I mean? I'm so tired of hearing about the bad stuff. Right, right. You know I mean, how many kids got AIDS today? How many uh, 
you know what I mean, how many people that didn't think they were going to live another day got to live another day? How many guys made up with their girlfriends? You know what I mean? You know yeah. what I mean? Who's celebrating the birthday today? But where's the happy stuff at, man? You know what I mean? So that that's what I'm about. Happy, happy, happy. And uh, you, your CD, just uh, I was making mention that you got different flavors on there, a little bluesy stuff. And Oh, yeah. Um, did you want to talk a little bit about uh, some of the, the musical partners on, on this record? Oh, yeah. Well, that's, you know, what I'm coming back with uh, is called the Over 25 Sound. Which means if you're over 25 years old, it won't you it won't it'll be a no-brainer when you hear the big rock music. And if you're under 25, then do it. You know, come on over and step in and check us out. You know, what I mean, that just happens to be the name of my company. I'm not trying to, uh, you know, excommunicate anybody. But on the CD, I have, uh, you know, I've been very, very blessed. Uh, myself and my musical partner, his name is Sure to Be, and he's, uh, as far as I'm concerned, the most talented, uh, unselfish, giving guy in the music business. I mean, you know, he plays the uh, all kinds of instruments, you know what I mean, from ukuleles to, uh, you know, timbales to harmonicas to accordions. It just does not matter. And we get we lock ourselves in the studio and we come up with these tracks. And, uh, you know, uh, rather than just have a record which had 12 or 15 of uh, Big Rob songs, which I've done that in the past, I wanted to kind of experiment with this. I've got some very talented people around me, um, you know, uh, unknown people who have a lot of talent and, you know, I wanted to try to feature them. So here comes the Uncle Loves and the uh, Mama Big, who is uh, my female vocalist, and Big Woo from the Problem Solvers, and which the Problem Solvers is a group I'll be coming out with after the first of the year, which they're going to do uh, Southern Soul, Blues, R&B type stuff. So they'll have tracks that go anywhere from sounding like The Temptations and uh, Otis Redding to, you know, futuristic Jagged Edge to... The guy out uh, by the name of Mel Waiters, who I produce, so we'll have all flavors, you know, and confidence. Just trying to come up with some good music, you know, and the music that's in my heart, the music I grew up with. And, you know, you and I have spoken lots of times talking about, you know, just the old school music, not necessarily, you know, everything that's, you know, just new. And now, that's what I'm just trying to do, man. You know, we set up the mini moves and the arp string machines and the wah wah pedals and the mutrons, and, you know, we go at it. Yeah, I mean, I, I was also talking with you about about music. I enjoy that uh, just as much about. I think we come from the same vein. Sure. And um, I, I wanted to ask you this. You know, growing up, you know, we grew up around the same time, uh, early '80s, late '70s, and, mm. and discovering music like that. Where do you think it, it went in another direction? That the music, such as uh, what you're you're just carrying on the tradition on, on the record. Where, where did things get put in the closet, or where did it go? Well, you know, it's a it's a really tricky thing that's happened to, you know, a lot of our great musical heroes, and it's not really their fault, meaning, you know, guys were making records, and then, uh, you know, a new sound came in or whatever, say more technical, more technical. Like, I can remember the first time I heard Planet Rock by Africa Band Bond and Soul Sonic Force. You know what I mean? I can remember where I was at and everything, mm -hmm. and that sounded a lot different than flashlight you know and that whole electrotronic uh electro boogie type you know planet patrol uh soul sonic force uh which then led into egyptian lover and uh you know that whole type of thing took it from where everything was you know uh hand claps and mini moves into a little bit more electronic thing and then you got groups like art and noise who came in and many other groups so then all the people who were making the music before then kind of, you know, I mean, they kind of got, you know, what's new is hot, and, you know, I mean, the music is constantly evolving. So then I think what happened is all our great funk heroes started trying to get into the, as rap got bigger and bigger, I think they started trying to get into the rap. And, you know, it's just no matter what, you know, Bootsy is not run DMC. You know what I mean? Right, right. And when I put on a Bootsy record, and I love Bootsy, I want to hear Bootsy, you know what I mean? I want to hear... Wind me up, baby. <laughs> Say what? The? You know, I want to hear that. I'm, I'm not really trying to hear, uh, you know, two years ago, a friend of mine asked me to say some MC. I ain't trying to hear that on a Bootsy record. When I put on a Run DMC record, I want to hear Run DMC. And, uh, you know, styles just started merging. I mean, and it's all good. I guess I was what I was going to tell you is that the trick that was played is that now that the old school is back in style, you know, 
uh, it's where guys like Bootsy or the Gap Band uh, or Earth, Wind, and Fire couldn't necessarily, they couldn't get on any radio stations because they weren't um, new enough or young enough or whatever it is. I mean, you know, it's a hard business. So they started trying to put these different little influences of the youth into their music. And the kids is kind of like, oh, man, come on, you know, we ain't quite feeling it the same way. And so, but with guys like Dr. Dre and DJ Quick and Ant Banks and many other, you know, producers uh, who started pulling the mini moves back out and said, man, you know, we want some of that one-way type funk. We want some of that zap type stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, hey, man, I know, you know, get somebody to play bass as they start evolving the hip-hop thing and going just from sampling records. Um, you know, and which that's a big misconception too, because they weren't just sampling records. You know, what I mean, it's, I mean, you know, Davy DMX and Curtis Blow and all the original hip hop producers, Rick Rubin, uh, Joey Robinson over at Sugar Hills, a good friend of mine, Jigs Chase. I mean, those guys, they were, uh, you know, I mean, they really created a whole new sound. But they so the musicians were treating the rappers like, oh man, what y'all doing is gonna play out. Well, it didn't play out. And so now I think it's finally coming back. Everything is finally getting back in some kind of order where, um, you know, people want to hear the funk guys be funky. They want to hear the rappers rap. And it's all cool once again. But the trick that was played is that, you know, hey, man, at a certain point, styles change. And, you know, I don't know if we want Michael Jackson to be hip-hopped out or if we just want him to be Michael Jackson, like Mm -hmm. we like him. Right, right. You know what I mean? And, you know, when Michael Jackson starts getting a little too hip hop, then he loses uh he loses us because we're his old school fans. And the new school fans look at him like, dude, you ain't Nelly <laughs> You know what I mean? You know, we you know, I mean my son looking at Michael Jackson like, Come on man, you the beat it guy. But the business is weird. So the biggest thing I learned from that is do the music that's in your heart. Don't necessarily try to you know, don't don't try to follow a trend, but until guys like yourself and the Internet became into such a strong major play, you had to kind of do whatever it was that everybody else was doing because you couldn't really be different, you know, because there was no outlet for it. But now Big Rob can go make a record that sounds just like something from 1981. And, you know, you'll play it and people will buy it because there's an outlet for it. So that's the greatest, you know, and I I love the Internet for that, man. Hey, speaking of the Internet, Rob, uh, we got – an instant message someone just sent it. It said, and I'm quoting this listener, the interview was so interesting. That guy is incredible. Tell the big Rob you have a listener who finds him incredible with all he knows about funk, the real funk. So, Well, uh, ever funking on, because, uh, you know, I'm a placebo syndrome, uh, cosmic slop, mommy, what's a funkadelic, uh, Bootsy Phelps and a complete strangers type funk guy. Right. You know, and anybody who's really deep off into the funk, they'll know exactly everything I just said. So, hey, man, man you know what I mean? I, you know, and that's another thing because I know that I'm schizophrenic in that side. I mean, because I grew up under guys like Bootsy, you know what I mean? And uh, grew up looking at, you know, these funk heroes make music. And so on one side of me, you know what I mean, I've got the funk and then, I also grew up at the beginning of rap, so, you know, I got to give mad props to Spoonie G, uh, which is a name that's never said uh, enough. I mean, you know, Spoonie G is the predecessor before there was LL Cool J, and, you know, I mean, there's Curtis Blow, Jimmy Spicer. Um, Dollar Bill, y'all, right? Dollar Bill, yeah, y'all. I got that on vinyl. You know what I mean? Uh, oh, man, the Cold Crush, Bro- Cold Crush Brothers, Cool Mo D, and the Treacherous Three. Uh, oh, man, I'm talking about back in the days of, uh, you know, Bobby Robinson and Joy Records when all the rappers were on Enjoy Records. That's before Sugar Hill. Bobby Robinson is a gentleman who ran Fire and Fury Records out of New York City. He had one big hit record. I mean, he had lots of hit records. Bobby Marchand, and I'll tell you about Bobby Marchand in a second, but Bobby Robinson had every, uh, with every beat of my heart, which was Gladys Knight and the Pips, Letter Full of Tears. Those were records in the 50s, which was even before I was born. But then in the late 70s, he started a rap label. And so he was like the home for Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, Spoonie G, Funky 4 plus one more. Oh, man. You know what I mean? A lot of guys, a lot of those early rap groups, before they made the Sugar Hill, was doing their thing and enjoy. And I was going to tell you about Bobby Marchand. Are you familiar with Bobby Marchand? Nah, I don't think so. No. Bobby Marchand is a, uh, was an entertainer. 
who's out of Louisiana, who was quote unquote old school. He had hit records back in the fifties and sixties, and uh, later on, after that part of his career was pretty much over, with, I guess he did talent shows and stuff, and uh, he was really like one of the forefathers, uh, one of the teachers and the mentors for those guys that cash money. You know what I mean? So he was able to teach those kids coming up, you know, the business that he had learned from the 50s and the 60s and the 70s and 80s, which I believe, I mean, I'm quite sure really helped them, you know, uh, to get such a strong grip on their business acumen and, you know, be successful. So I was just thinking about him. But so, you know, just going back, man, listen to all the, Early music, you know what I mean? Like I said, oh, man, you know, it used to be so much rap stuff out. Yeah. So you know, I mean, there's so much rap stuff out now, but I have to give props to the guys who influenced me, Grandmaster Melly Mel, uh, Rakim. Um, you know, so on one hand, I'm listening to Bootsy and them doing Body Slam and Shining Might Rag Popping and Count Trackler and all that stuff. And then the other thing is, you know, I'm also listening to Peter Piper and it's like that. And... uh Houdini, which is one of my favorite groups, Ecstasy and Jalil. Oh, yeah. Uh, UTFO, The Real Roxanne, uh, Fat Boys, you know, Dougie Fresh, Slick Rick. Oh, man, you know what I mean? Just, just listen to those guys. So, you know, I got all those, all those different things kind of popping off in my head at the same time. Well, I, I got a question for you. You, yeah. you. you got those old videos from uh, when Donnie Simpson used to have on, on Video Soul? Oh, man, look, I, you know, I collect videos, so I have to go back even farther with you. I have a friend of mine who has a business, uh, and he started off. It's not even so much a business. It's just uh, he's a collector, a historian, and he archives. So not only do I have Donnie Simpson, and I go back to when BET used to be on for two hours a day. Right. And they only had about three videos to play, Zap, uh, I Can Make You Dance, Stephanie Mills, Sweet Sensation. <laughs> those are the only two I can remember, you know what I mean, but. This guy has, I mean, you know, I mean, he's got the Jackson 5 on Ed Sullivan and the Hollywood Palace and, you know, the original Temptations. Because I love, I mean, I just love all kinds of black music because, you know, I mean, there's so many unsung heroes like David Ruffin. You know what I mean? I mean, my goodness, man. I mean, that guy is, I mean, he's impeccable. I mean, the man sang a song in 1964. It's 2002, and it's still a smash record. You know yeah. what I mean? So it's like uh you know, what can you say about that, you know? Well, the music on Grown Folks Music, uh, one, one of the standout things is that it, it's kind of timeless. You can't put, you can't put uh, a number on it. It still sounds good today, and I'm sure it'll be sounding, sounding real nice uh, years down the road. But uh, you can get this right now in your collection from Big Rob by going to his website, heybigrob.com, H-E-Y-B-I-G-G-R-O-B-B.com. And uh, we are going to get into another track, but uh, this has been getting a lot of response. I know you were on the road this weekend traveling, yeah, um, down south in Atlanta and mm -hmm. uh, Georgia. Uh, the big woman song. Oh my um, goodness! Yeah, that's this... dedicated. That's dedicated to all big women. If you're a plus size woman, don't be ashamed. Uh, you know, I I just want to, like I said, I want to make music that uplifts people. You know, what I mean, it makes people feel good. And being a big guy myself, you know, people. He's like, look at that fat boy eating that candy bar and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> and, you know what I mean, and I noticed that in our society, you know what I mean, you cut on TV, as always, they hating on big women. So I'm here to tell the big women, if nobody else loves them, Big Rob loves them, and I appreciate them. And uh, I want to send this out to the people that are listening in Atlanta and the people that are listening in Detroit, Cincinnati, uh, and also to our friends over in uh, France because, you know, we've been getting a lot of response from over there and uh, Seattle, Washington. So, the big woman song, hey man, and the, all the big ladies out there, just stopping, shaking, shimmy, it's okay, uh, it's all good. And Big Rob tells it right here. Now, this is a great track from Grown Folks Music. We'll come back and. Oh man, yeah. this is all good. I'm having fun, man. Yeah, I, I love talking music with you and, and listen to your jams. And um, you know, you mentioned Bootsy Collins is one of, one of your mentors and collaborators. Uh, Bootsy Collins, you did a little work on, on his new release that's out in Europe right yeah, now? Yeah, well, you know, just, just a tad bit of history. I mean, you can go to my website, you can read the whole story. But, you know, as a kid growing up in the projects, back when I was DJing, street DJing, and working at a little radio station in Cincinnati called uh, WAIF 88.3, uh, I met Bootsy. He was one of the first guys I interviewed. And actually, he's the guy who, you know what I mean, just when I saw him with the rhinestones and the, all that stuff, man, just blew my mind. Because I I was like I'd never really 
seen anybody who looked quite like him and did it the way he did it, and the response that he got from the people was just phenomenal. You know what I mean? So um, we have been great friends since that time, since I was a kid. And uh, the most recent thing, uh, when he did an album called What's Bootsy Doing, um, I did some uh, lyric writing and stuff for him on there. It's a little rapper that goes, everybody funking and don't know how. I think it's time for a pop wow. Uh, yeah. He's slaying fake tears with his funk tear charm as the space base slides from his hands to his arms, and it was a uh, you know a big thing. It's on that you hear that rap on uh, it's on uh, the What's Bootsy Doing CD. Uh, the song is called Party on Plastic, and which that was probably the first time I ever had a you know a published record or a song or wrote something that actually made it to a record. And uh, most recently, my, me and my partner are sure to be. Went down to uh, the rehab, which is Bootsy Studio. He had Snoop in town, and a few months back, and they were collaborating on a bunch of stuff, and some of it you probably seen on MTV. And one of the things, uh, Bootsy's got a song called "Don't Let Him" on his new uh, CD, uh, uh, the new Bootsy CD. I think it's called "All Star Funk," and uh, so it's uh, Snoop and Sure to Be, uh, who plays the Rob Box because I make my own brand of voice boxes. And um, Rosie Gaines and Bootsy. Oh Sosa. yeah, Rosie. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a hot track. You know, I mean, I've never. I, Rosie wasn't there, but I did meet Snoop, and actually Bernie Royal was there too. Oh, cool. You know, what I mean, and so that was just, uh, you know, what I mean, that was just a pleasure, man, to be, you know, sitting in the room with, uh, you know, Bootsy and Bernie at the same time. I mean, you know, what I mean, that's, you know, that's goosebump time, right? Oh my goodness, man! All <laughs> we needed was George and for those guys to let me produce yeah. it. Yeah, or Victor Wooten to stop by again. Oh man, Victor Wooten, most definitely. That'd yeah. be too much bass in the room, <laughs> man. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, so uh, we should also let our nis- listeners know if they if they don't know, you also are a member of Zap, which has oh, my uh, continued since uh, Roger Troutman passed away, and uh, right. you guys are keeping the spirit and the funk alive. Oh, most definitely. And there's a new Zap record that's being made right now. Uh, if I dial over to the uh, to the Zap Studios, you hear it playing in the background. Uh huh. They're over there mixing and getting it together right now, and uh, it's going to be phenomenal. And I'm looking really, really forward uh, to doing that. You know what I mean? Uh, and just, I mean, we're always out doing shows. Uh, we had no choice but to continue to go on. You know what I mean? Uh, you know what I mean? God bless us to be able to go on and you know continue to do it. And Roger was such a great teacher uh, that. You know, hey, man, you know, they say if you build something and it can stand even when you're no longer here, then you truly built something. And the group Zap is an institution like that. So look forward uh, to Zap coming to your city, your town, your neck of the woods. I mean, we just came from California and Alabama. And, I mean, you know, we we, can't, we just always playing somewhere. And there's nothing, in my opinion, that, that beats a live funk and roll show. I mean, that to, to this day, nothing has topped it for me live. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. you know what I mean? And we've been blessed to have a great show that entertains a lot of people. And, you know, I mean, I think our show is a lot more spiritual now, but considering what we've been through, you know what I mean? Maybe we can uplift. I can tell you this, you know what I mean? After losing Roger and Larry in such a tragic way, uh, before I would see mothers on TV crying and I could feel their pain because I'm a human being, you know, and I could see, you know, when people say, oh, 